Right behind me is a very peculiar object. An object that's located right here in the Milky Way and that even today is quite mysterious. With the main reason for the mystery being something that happened here nearly 200 years ago, back in mid-1800s. It's known as the Great Eruption and it was essentially an appearance of an extremely bright star that suddenly became the second brightest star in the night skies. And intriguingly, it maintained its brightness for nearly 20 years, finally fading in 1856. And though back then nobody actually knew what's happening here, modern observations, including Hubble Space Telescope, essentially reveal what's now known as the the beautiful homunculus nebula. Enormous beautiful nebula produced almost 200 years ago that even today still is very difficult to explain. The only thing we know about it is that it was very likely a result of some kind of a major disruption of the central star and it's also most likely what we often refer to as the supernova imposter. Produced by the central star at the Carina, when it was initially approximately 150 to maybe 250 solar masses, but lost a huge amount of mass without going fully supernova. But still producing very bright, very large emissions, making it appear as a supernova for many, many years. And today this concept is sometimes referred to as the eternal supernova. One of the bigger mysteries in modern astronomy. And well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent analysis, recent simulations and recent conclusions when it comes to a very peculiar, very exotic type of supernova that might have finally been explained. With this potentially being the best example that happened right here in the Milky Way. And generally these supernova are referred to as PPI supernova, pulsational pair instability supernova which only occur in stars of a very specific mass. For example, the most common supernova, type 2 supernova, happens when a star of a certain mass collapses, producing a neutron star or a black hole as the final leftover. These only happen in stars that are at least 8 solar masses, but potentially not more than 80 solar masses, because at that point something else starts to happen inside stars. We also have type 1 supernova, resulting from the explosion of a white dwarf, which are also pretty common, but do not necessarily involve large massive stars. Type 1 and type 2 supernova are the most common types we see across the universe. But occasionally stars can get pretty massive, especially in certain locations in various molecular clouds. This was of course one such star, but generally quite a lot of these stars are located in the Carina Nebula, and even more of these stars are found in the nearby Tarantula Nebula inside Large Magellanic Cloud. And for stars over approximately 80 to 90 solar masses, something else starts happening inside of them. They essentially start acquiring a lot of instability based on effects from both Einsteinian theories and theories involving the light pressure that prevents stars from collapsing. So for example, if you were to find a very large massive star and if you were to look inside of it, you would discover that in very large hot stars, the pressure from gamma rays, which are produced inside very hot objects, keeps the upper layers of the star supported from gravitational collapse. And the hotter the inside, the more gamma rays are produced, the more support they provide. But with very very powerful photons and especially gamma rays, something else starts happening once they acquire certain energies. At some point they start interacting with a lot of other stuff nearby and actually have a chance to suddenly convert into physical mass. Basically converting gamma rays into electron positron pairs, which though does increase the mass of the star, also reduces the external pressure. Or in other words, some of these gamma rays can no longer support the star from collapsing. And the hotter the star gets, the more pressure it gets, the more of these gamma rays are going to be converted to physical mass, electrons and positrons, which in theory makes the star just a little bit smaller, increases the overall pressure inside and increases the temperature even more. And though some of the electrons and positrons can then convert back into gamma rays, at some point it can actually reach a kind of a critical mass where a lot more gamma rays are removed from the inside, causing a kind of a instability inside the star. And in stars of approximately 130 to 250 solar masses, we call this pair instability which results in a pair instability supernova. 
a type of a supernova that technically destroys the whole star in a very short period of time as it continuously collapses more and more, releasing massive amounts of energy in the process. And stars over 150 solar masses will almost always produce these types of supernova. Yet stars that are maybe a little bit less massive can produce something a little bit more exotic. Because it turns out that if a star is only about 100 solar masses to maybe maximum 130, it might not actually have enough pressure on the inside to completely finalize this process, exploding the star to the end. And instead, what was discovered over many years is that it seems to actually create what scientists sometimes refer to as eternally luminous supernova or pulsating supernova, which repeat many, many times over many, many years. And Eta Carina, or the Homunculus Nebula, is believed to be one of such examples. But because in this case, the final star is still there at the end, it's sometimes also referred to as the imposter supernova. A supernova that happens for many years, but does not destroy the star at the end. Or at least it doesn't at first. In many cases, it does seem to result in a supernova at the end, potentially producing a black hole. Here though, after almost 200 years, it seems to be still around. Which of course makes this a pretty big mystery. But a mystery that we might have just solved through this relatively recent study. So first of all, in the last few decades, at least a handful of these very mysterious exotic supernova have been discovered in other galaxies. They are sometimes referred to as what's known as type 5 supernova, and here is maybe one example that happened in 2010. Although SN 1000 plus 0216 that was discovered in 2006 is a bit more well known because it was so bright that at that point it was one of the farthest supernova ever detected, directly seen in a galaxy billions of light years away. And because of the sheer brightness and the length of the supernova, it was difficult to explain this as either type 1 or type 2. It was an exotic supernova almost for sure. Another similar event was actually detected by the iconic Fritz Zwicky back in 1961. Once again, a very similar explosion that was way too bright and lasted for a very long time. But a much more intriguing event is the event you see right here. A strange supernova that was continuously erupting for at least three years and had even previously erupted back in 1954, finally disappearing around 2017. And so in many of these cases, the actual observations are very similar. They almost always at first appear as a typical supernova that's not super bright, with the brightness diminishing over time, but then repeating many, many times, very often lasting for many months or even years. With a regular supernova, you're unlikely to see anything after just a few months. The peak brightness normally occurs within just a couple of weeks. Here though, it's repeated many times, with many additional explosions sometimes being even brighter than the first one. And depending on the original star, they seem to either appear as type 2 or sometimes type 1 supernova. But in some cases being even brighter than either one of those, maintaining this brightness much longer than they should. To solve the mystery, researchers behind the paper in a description performed one of the most complex supercomputer simulations, helping them visualize exactly what happens inside these stars. But unlike previous simulations, which were often either one or two dimensional, and unfortunately did not provide enough details, this supercomputer simulation that used approximately 5 million computing hours used three dimensional hydrodynamics to visualize a lot of different kinds of turbulence that was previously invisible in one or two dimensional simulations. In the process discovering that a lot of this turbulence plays a very crucial role. With the overall conclusion being that well, it does seem to act as a kind of a fountain-like eruption with several smaller supernova repeating over and over as a lot of different types of gamma rays inside the core trigger pulsations in various layers leading to several violent contractions which then lead to minor explosions. And it looks like each of these contractions is basically a mini supernova, sometimes actually a really bright one. And sometimes, just like with the homunculus nebula, Various eruptions tend to interact with material from different previous eruptions, producing additional brightness and additional bright emissions, making the overall object appear extremely bright in a lot of different frequencies of light. And that's precisely what happened with the Eta Carina and what essentially produced the Homunculus Nebula, several pulsating explosions that happened over many years, resulting in the object that became the second brightest star in the night skies. 
And when a lot of material from previous eruptions interacts and collides together, it usually adds up to 30% of various energetic emissions, making this appear extremely bright, even if nothing is happening inside the star anymore. Which to some extent explains some of these super luminous supernova we've seen so many times in the past. But at some point, these stars lose so much mass that they actually become less than 100 solar masses in mass. And this is when the pressure inside is no longer enough to convert gamma rays into electron-positron pairs. Which basically kind of ends the whole process and leads to one of two possible results. Either the star explodes, finalizing the whole process and leaving behind a black hole, or it becomes what you see right here. A really massive, really bright star that's still kind of unstable, still has not exploded, but will explode in the future. We don't really know when, but sometimes in the future. And so within just a few years, these stars tend to lose anywhere from 10 to maybe 30 solar masses in material, which of course creates these beautiful nebula and also adds a lot of material to the rest of the galaxy, helping the galaxies evolve in the process. With this whole process also helping us understand how many different massive stars seem to evolve and seem to change with time. So definitely an intriguing analysis and an intriguing discovery. But exactly what happens to the Homunculus Nebula and Eta Carina at the moment is still not really clear. Nobody is actually still certain why the star did not explode like so many other pulsating pair instability supernova. For some reason, this star decided to take a break. And so it's definitely still going to explode in the future, but at the moment nobody knows when. And you can learn more about the star and the nebula in one of the videos in the description. On that note, it looks like now we understand this very exotic supernova just a little bit better. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once another one of these events is seen somewhere out there in the universe. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.